welcome to Zion. We're following Jesus. We invite, equip, and serve our neighbor and one another. It's good to have you with us on this third Sunday in Lent, whether you're joining us in person or joining us online. A link to our worship bulletin is always listed on our homepage so you can actively participate with us. For those of you gathered in person, thank you for observing the safety guidelines of your masks and social distance and appreciate you doing that. A special welcome to those of you who are visiting and those returning. It's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And now let us begin our worship with the confession and forgiveness. Please stand and drink. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You're welcome to remain standing or kneel or sit. Most merciful God, sometimes we strive through this life arrogantly, believing that our achievements come solely by our own brilliance, our own perseverance. Sometimes we tiptoe through this life fearfully, worried that we will be shortchanged of what we need and of what we want. Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we meander through this life inattentively, unsuspecting that our words may harm or our actions may injure. Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we slip through this life spitefully, supposing that grudges should be kept and forgiveness should be withheld. Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we wander through this life obliviously, unaware that small and large miracles surround us. Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we stop through this life noisily, forgetting that God just may be waiting to meet us in the silence. Forgive us for trying so graciously on this journey. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace, and teach us in the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading is Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in reading responsibly Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day he tells his tale to another, and one night he tells knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound is gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched the tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of its chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the unrest to enter the heavens, and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, much more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey and than gold. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will pour. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, 
The world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand as we're able for the gospel acclamation. St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making the whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, the temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. May your word be my word, and may the thoughts and meditation of our minds and hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. After experiencing ten plagues, being pursued by Pharaoh and his army, Escaping through the Red Sea while Pharaoh's army was washed away and drowned, traveling through the wilderness and encountering the Lord at Mount Sinai. It was then, as we heard, that God spoke all these words to the people of Israel. Professor Emeritus Terence Fredheim emphasizes, these are words given to you by your God. And it's a singular you. These words are given to you, to you, to you, by your God. This, the law is a gift of a God who has redeemed you. And it's the first thing we hear in this. It's not about what we are expected to do, but what God has already done for us. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have another gods before me. This is a because then covenant. It's a different kind of covenant and contract than we usually encounter. Because I am the Lord your God and you are my people, 
then this is how we are to live. Christian Wendland lifts up that the covenant is a specific covenant within the already existing covenant with Abraham. You see, this following these commands are, are not what saves us. It's a relationship that God has established with us and Jesus Christ, as we've come to know, who saves us. The covenant, the promise, is already there. Now we're talking about boundaries. We're talking about expectations. These commandments are given to an already elected, already redeemed, already believing, and already worshiping community. And they have to do with the shape of daily life on the part of those already in relationship with God. Martin Luther's explanation of how we are to relate to God and how we are to relate to others comes through very clearly as he explains the Ten Commandments. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or anything that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. Why does that part not usually show up in our small catechism? Because it would scare the crap out of most people who were reading it. Right? We're going to let you know that part later. <laughs> Can you imagine? Part of it is... It's just the emphasis of how important it is to have God first. It's not so much about punishing as allowing natural consequences to happen. If, we, if those of us who are parents don't put God above everything else, it affects our children. It affects our community. It affects, it affects the world. And so, yeah, it does go generation to generation unless somebody breaks that cycle again. And if someone is doing that, the same thing, it's got that same ripple effect, that same benefit. And so it, it's already there in God's intention to put God first. Luther refers to these words that come after you shall have no other gods before me as an appendix. It's those first words, you shall have no other gods, that drive all of the commandments and that drive our relationship with God. In his large catechism, yes, there's a large catechism in addition to a small one. The large one tends to be for, for pastors. In the large catechism, Luther explains a God is a term for that which we are to look for all good and in which we are to find refuge in all need. When I used to work in the addiction and recovery field and was talking with people about a higher power, they said, it doesn't matter if you believe in God, if you base your decisions and if what drives your actions are something else, whether it's what people think or what it will get you. If something else occupies your thoughts, drives your actions, guides you, moves you into certain paths, that's your God, little g. And so it is that Luther says, to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe in that one with our whole heart. As I have often said, it is the trust and faith of the heart alone that make both God and an idol. Anything on which your heart relies and depends, I say, that is really your God. The intention of this commandment, therefore, is to require true faith and confidence of the heart, which fly straight to the one true God and cling to him alone. As he speaks for God, Luther says, what this means is see to it that you let me alone be your God and never search for another. In other words, whatever good thing you lack, look to me for it and seek it from me. And whenever you suffer misfortune and distress, crawl to me and cling to me. I myself will give you what you need and help you out of every danger. Only do not let your heart cling to or rest in anyone else. There are some who think that they have God and everything they need when they have money. 
and property, maybe a retirement fund. They trust in them and boast in them so stubbornly and securely that they care for no one else. They too have a God, that is money and property on which they set their whole heart. This is the most common idol on earth. Those who have money and property feel secure, happy, and fearless, as if they were sitting in the midst of paradise. On the other hand, those who have nothing but doubt and despair, as if they knew of no God at all, have a God as well. So too those who boast of great learning, wisdom, power, prestige, family, and honor, and who trust in them, have a God also, but not the one true God. Luther says, notice again how presumptuous, secure, and proud people are when they have such possessions and how despondent they are when they lack them or when they are taken away. Therefore, I repeat, the correct interpretation of this commandment is that to have a God is to have something in which the heart trusts completely. Now, you and I know we can't trust in it completely. And we turn from one side to another. We're like Peter getting out of that boat in the storm and walking right to Jesus until you start to notice the waves and you start to notice the wind and you start to notice that I'm, I'm doing something that's not normally happening. I'm walking on water and then you start to sink. You start to panic. You start to grab for anything that you can. That is part of why we're gathered back together as a community of faith, whether in person or online, because we need to remind each other, you're grabbing on to the one thing. Anybody watched Ellen's Game of Games on TV with her mount, St. Ellen, where, where they're trying to go up this hill that, that changes all the time? There are ropes there that you can grab. Most of them aren't attached to anything. So when you grab for it, you come loose. So it is for us. A lot of times we grab for something that really doesn't hold, doesn't save us. Those institutions, those, those people that we thought we could depend on, sometimes we can't. And so we need to keep reminding ourselves, I need to grab onto what I can depend on. What is identifying who we want God to be in our lives, who we, who we choose to trust, even if fearfully. What does it say about this time of pandemic in this nation in terms of how divided and polarized we are? What does it say of our own responses to our circumstances? How much is our, the words on our coin true for us these days? In God we trust. We're, we're, we're trusting in a lot of other things and it allows us to be untied rather than united. Asking these questions and, and, and looking at where we're at and who I trust is not meant to, to create any guilt or shame. It's to urge us to be aware of where we are and who we are and to whom we belong, in whom, not what, we trust. To be intentional about how we live each day we are given. God's words that someone else dubbed commandments and Luther's explanations of them can inspire us, guide us, and remind us that we are called, loved, and can be guided through these days. The study some of our young people are about to begin would be worth all of us engaging in. To refresh our memories and to refresh our hope and in so doing, rekindle the hope in others. God and God's word make that hope possible. And to that may all God's people say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> You stand and drink for the hill of the day.
together with Christians of every time, place, and space, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all who are in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation your people's words and actions honor your name. Lord, in your mercy, the heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Lord, in your mercy. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Lord, in your mercy. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering. Especially this day we lift up Robert, Jeff, Brandon, Shana, Marla, Steve, Leslie, Willetta, Dawn, Gina, Guy, Judy, Anne, Michelle, Courtney, and Ben, Susie, Lily, Matt, Luke, Sarah, Brendan, and Michael, Cindy, Sherry, Susan, Steve, Alyssa, Jennifer, Laura, Nick, Debbie, Eileen, Rosie, Pete, Carol, Billy, Maggie, Pastor Fred, Pat, Ted, David, Candace and family, Katie, Todd and Debbie, Colton, all those suffering and recovering from COVID-19, for those grieving, including the friends and family of Melody, Vicki, Suzanne, Lonnie, and Roger, and those we now name silently in our hearts. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Lord, in your mercy. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Lord, in your mercy, you gather us as one church. Reveal what can be done for, with, and by the congregations of Bethlehem of Lake City and St. Andrews of Jacksonville Beach. Thank you for their partnership with us. And bless all you call, who gather, and then you send to proclaim Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace cautiously around with those around us. may be seated. We take a moment to reflect on all that God offers and provides for us and how God seeks to give to others through us.
you stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. may be seated.
compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A few announcements before we go. First off, we're in Deerfield Beach Magazine. There's extra copies available. Look at that. Woohoo! Yeah. Thank you to our communication specialist, Kurt Schmidt. Whole, whole back page plus, and we didn't we didn't pay for this. That's even better. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> and then we also have our ad here. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful work. Uh, it's part of our inviting other people. And we can't rely on ads to invite people. So we encourage you to invite people to all the different opportunities because another part of our mission is to equip people to live as Christians in this world. And so we need to take advantage of that and we need to offer that to others as well. We had, uh, well, I invite you to join us for Wednesday evening study of the Journeys of 40 at 7 o'clock. It's on uh, Facebook Live. It's followed by prayer at the end of the day at 8 o'clock, led by our cantor, Kurt Schmidt. So hope that you can join us for those Bible studies. We've had two already on the 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years. We had a free technology class, part of a series this past Thursday on how to unlock the power of your cell phones. The last one was on Zoom. The next one, next month, is way more practical. It's say, well, how do I work this? Uh, and to find out what's in there. It's free. You can come here to have that class in person, or you can join us via Zoom. And our thanks to TDM and to Care Plus for sponsoring uh, this past session. So it's the first Thursday of each month, and it's at 3 o'clock. So at that, as well as all the, this other information, is on our web page, on our Wednesday news that gets sent out. Thank you to uh, Thrive and Financial Associate uh, Christy Clark. She met with YEP, our Youth Empowerment Project, on Friday to talk about finances and talk about some of the basics of that. So, so there was that as well. If you're interested in confirmation, refreshing your memory, or, or for the first time learning about Luther's small catechism in the Bible, Join us after worship today uh, with some of our, our youth and parents because we're going to be looking at how we're actually going to do that. Uh, and we'll have some pizza and soda along the way if that, that helps entice you. This uh, coming Thursday and the second Thursday of each month, uh, we're beginning a grief support group from grief to wholeness. And that's about dealing with any kind of changes or losses that you may experience in your life. This too is going to be a hybrid, it's going to be available for people in person, but also on Facebook Live, uh, Zoom, on Zoom, and uh, so it's, it's a way for you to look at that. There's extra flyers available if you want to take one and post it somewhere to let other people know about it, especially in this age and time, there are a lot of people who, who could use that support as we're going through that. Our life first for this coming week is Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Thank you to Eileen for taking temps and greeting this morning, along with the help of Gail Schmidt. And if uh, thank you to Matt Don yeah, yeah, and thank you, Matt Donahue, for our, uh, our new temperature device. I, I love gadgets, and that's really cool. <laughs> and it works. So thank you very much. And thank you all for your generosity uh, to the ministry we share, whether it's in offerings in the back of the, of the congregation or it's online. And I see something wonderful being held up over here. It is, I believe, Girl Scout cookies. Do you want to say anything about it? The s'mores are six? Yes, the s'mores are. That's not fair. <laughs> the rest the rest the rest of the the rest of the cookies are five. Shane's gonna have those available. And uh, boy, that's 
During Lent? Come on. No. It's all right. Uh, with all of that being said, please stand as you're able as we receive our Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.